Hello, my name is Nakai Rimmer, and this is the last video from this set of videos on probability and calculus. And so in this video, we look at variance and standard deviation. These are measurements of the spread of a data set. And so we're going to see how we can calculate them using calculus. The, uh, the variance symbol is a lowercase sigma squared. And it's, it's going to be a number that's used to measure the spread of the probability density function. There's actually two formulas that you can use. One of them involves the quantity of x minus the mean squared multiplied by f of x integrated from minus infinity to infinity. And the other one involves just x squared multiplied by f of x integrated from minus infinity to infinity after the calculation of that integral is done, you subtract off the mean squared. I prefer the second integral there. And um, interesting question is, why is this the case? Like, why, why can't you do one or the other? So the last slide we go over today in, in this video will be the, the, the why behind the fact that these two integrals are exactly the same. Um, but the thing about variance is that the units are off. It's like, having your unit, but then squaring it. It's like going from measuring inches to having inches squared, which is area. So, so the actual better measurement for, um, for spread of a, of a, of a density of density function is actually standard deviation where you take the square root of variance. Okay. All right, great. So our example number seven, first is a uh, sort of polynomial in nature. And then we'll do another one in example number eight. That's much more difficult. It's exponential in nature. So this particular function is a parabola that opens downward from negative two to two. And so uh, it's zero at those two places. And then um, it's zero otherwise. And so um, it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And so this three over 32 number multiplier in front is to make sure that we have a um, probability density function to have the total area be equal to one. If you had that out of there, the area under the parabola itself without that constant would be 32 over three. So the three over 32 is to make it equal to one. Our job, find the standard deviation of this particular probability density function. You can't find standard deviation without finding the mean. And so let's first find the mean. How do you find the mean? Well, you take your function and you multiply it by x and you integrate that officially over the entire real line. But if your function is zero, you only, you know, you don't integrate over that portion of it. So we only integrate over the portion where you're non-zero minus two to two for this particular function. And so what do we get? Well, you know, just uh, distribute the x in four x minus x cubed and we integrate that. So we get x squared over actually you know what let's not even integrate uh, two 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 thoughts of it we could use the symmetry um you see this function is an odd function a polynomial is odd if only odd powers appear an odd function is symmetric with respect to the origin whatever is to the right of the uh, y-axis is mirror imaged across the origin and, and so um, the total area when you're integrating from minus a to a will zero out. And so um, because this is an odd function, we don't have to actually integrate it. When you have an odd function integrated from minus a to a, automatically the answer is that you have zero area. Not the, not the actual parabola area we're talking about here. We're talking about this cubic area, this cubic function, 4x minus x cubed. An odd function from minus a to a integrated is zero. Okay, great. So the mean is zero, but because of the symmetry of the uh, PDF, that makes sense, hopefully. And so then um, when you have a symmetric PDF, both the mean and median will be exactly the same thing. Half your area should be to the left and half your area should be to the right if you're symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So to get the standard deviation, I'm going to use the second formula. So I'm going to integrate x squared times f of x. Uh, I shouldn't say sigma squared equals that. I guess if the mean is zero, I guess, the, yes, the sigma squared does equal that. So we're going to subtract off the mean squared. So yes, we could say that sigma squared equals to that. 
put out the three over 32, put the X squared in, do the anti, oh, you know what? Let's not do the antiderivative. Well, let's not do it yet. Let's take advantage of the fact we're integrating from minus two to two. This time, look inside and we have an even function. A polynomial is even if the degree of all the terms are even, and there could be a constant term as well. And so um, with an even function, that is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So to instead of integrating from minus two to two, we can integrate from zero to two and then double. So when a function is even and you're integrating from minus a to a, you can go from zero to a and double. Take advantage of these things. You, it's so much better to have zero as a lower limit of integration than minus two especially if you're integrating a polynomial because when you plug the zero into the antiderivative, it's automatically gonna be zero. So it's just easier to deal with. Antiderivative, four x cubed over three minus x fifth over five. Outside, it was three over 32, but the doubling caused it to be three over 16. You put the two in and you, you know, zero is gonna give you zero. So you put the two in, you get an eight and you get a 32. And you know, if you're doing this without a calculator, then this is something, you know, it might be kind of difficult. What you can do, though, to help yourself out is to factor out. You see, the first fraction has a 32 in it, and the second fraction has a 32 in it. You can factor that 32 out, and watch how easy it makes your fraction arithmetic. You'll be left with one-third minus one-fifth, or two-fifteenths, because you do five minus three over 15. And so uh, outside, what's going on is the 32 is going to make the 16 then cancel out. And we're just going to double the 3, and we end up with a 6. And 6 times 2 fifteenths reduces to be 4 fifths. Your variance is 4 fifths. But your standard deviation is the square root of that. And so it's 2 over rad 5 if you're not into rationalizing. But if you want to rationalize, it's 2 rad 5 over 5. All right, great. Um, let's see, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna do the, uh, the next slide, the next example that I had planned, but I do wanna um, skip to the final slide. Hopefully I can do that here. There's no way to skip slides. Wow, okay, end the show, cut to here. The uh, example eight that I was gonna do, I guess I can make another video for it. It's the exponential density function and calculating the standard deviation for that. Um, I'll do that in another video. But I do want to do this here, hopefully. Someone, um, I, was, I was teaching this in class and someone asked about why are these two formulas equivalent? That seems strange. I mean, like, how could that possibly be? And then a student emailed me. Um, thank you, Robert. And he, he said he worked it out. And, and, um, and so he helped me to figure out how to best explain it. And so I'm going to start with the one that's on the left. I'm going to end up with the one that's on the right. Hopefully in two minutes, we shall see. You know, x minus the mean squared, you multiply that out, right? Square it out, foil it out. You get x minus two of those x, oh, I'm sorry, x squared minus two of those x times mean products plus the mean squared. All right, nothing illegal so far, just some algebra. And now we'll distribute. So we'll have x squared times f of x and minus 2x mu times f of x plus mu squared times f of x. All of this is, you know, its own separate integral from minus infinity to infinity. Nothing illegal yet. Okay, just some algebra. And now look at that last one. Focus your attention on the last integral. Me, the mu squared, the mean squared is a, is a constant. You could factor that out. I mean, pull it outside the integral, I mean. And then that integral should look very familiar. The integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx in the properties of a probability density function, it's true that this integral is one. So what happens then is we get the one times mean squared. So we get the first integral, which of course is in our target, but then it's plus the mean squared. And now we have this middle integral. We gotta see what's going on with this middle integral. Apparently, it's going to hopefully end up with a negative 2 mean squared so we can combine and get the right formula. So let's go off on the side and let's do this uh, integration by parts. It's a product, right? It's, it's uh, two functions multiplied by each other. Let's, let's do integration by parts. I know it's abstract because we just have f of x, but watch what happens. It's really nice. Now, I'm going to be strategic about this. I'm going to choose u equals negative 2 mu and choose dv equals x dx. 
and we hit the 10 minute mark. Sorry, it won't be too much longer. Sorry. Um, why that choice? Well, you take the derivative of u and you take the integral of dv. Well, the derivative of a constant, mu is a constant, so negative 2 times mu is a constant. The derivative of that is 0. And what about the integral of dv? The integral of x times f of x is the definition of what the mean is. So that's going to be just a symbol mu. And then the formula for integration by parts is u times v minus the integral of v du. With that 0 in there, though, the v du integral will 0 out. So yes, we do get minus 2 times the mean squared. And in the other part of the formula, we have the mean squared. Those two terms combine, and we have exactly the right-hand formula. I'm so glad that you guys, uh, my one student in the class asked it, and I'm so glad my other student in the class, you know, put some thought behind it and really worked hard on trying to figure it out and help me to map out the right way, hopefully, to explain it. And so... It's a very good question. You know, why could you use one formula or the other? They look very different. And it turns out through, through techniques from this class, integration by parts and probability um, density functions, we can show that they are the same. All right, that was great. So let's go ahead and stop here. Um, thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this journey. Um, this is the video on variance and standard deviation. I'll be one more video coming looking at the variance and standard deviation for an exponential density function. And that'll be it of the that'll be end of the probability set of videos. Um, please uh, ask any questions that you might have, comment down below or um, like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.